Welcome to the Battle of Son Vitir, guys, or Saint Vip, as they probably called it. At least the Americans probably called it as they were approaching, for sure. Now, this scenario focuses on the initial German attempt to smash the enemy defenses through the Losheim Gap, trying to repeat the action of 1940. And essentially, this is, you know, one of Germany's last attempts to sort of push the enemy back and successfully get a victory here. Let's see if that happens. Let's see if we're even able to do that. So here we go. Um, let's get started. We are, of course, playing as the Germans. Wish us luck. Or don't, if you're if you're siding with the Americans in this particular fight. Here we go. So as you can see, it's morning, it's overcast, and it's just below zero. So it's actually quite cold here. Um, the Americans are not necessarily expecting an attack. And this surprise is what's going to get us, you know, give us a chance here at a victory. Um, so first things first, uh, we've got this northern stack. Let's just take a look at the different stacks we've got here. How you doing, boys? Um, let's see, first SS. We've got the third Falschmjäger as well. And down here, it looks like we've got Volksgrenadiers. Uh, and look at... Ooh, yeah. I don't know what the hell this is. Um, but uh, they have quite a few artillery pieces, and it looks like also some wonderful stugs here we've also got what looks like the volksgrenadier core and just beautiful so we're gonna swing up from the bottom hopefully hit um this area over here Bielf. um we probably want to meet the armies at Setz or schonberg and we'll be attacking westwards over here as well and of course in the north to try and get to the bullingen supply area but saint v is all the way over here so we've got quite a way to travel um quite a hell of a fight all right, here we go, guys. No, you're absolutely right, Anthony. And, you know, it's... I think most movies on the Battle of the Bulge focus... Or, or at least this battle is a main focus. So this is certainly one of those battles, much like Baston, uh, that is quite popular, it looks like, in media. All right, first things first, we need to see what we're dealing with. I'm going to get up close and personal, folks. And I'm just going to do a nice little scout attack, actually... It already looks like the odds are good, but it's always best to be safe. So let's probe here. As you can see, that was probably a good idea. It seems to be a little stronger than we anticipated. Um, maybe we should weaken the enemy a bit with some artillery support fire. I'm going to use two um, of the... Oh my goodness, look at that, guys. The Neville Burfers are just unbelievable. The Werfer Brigade is hopefully on point with this attack. Here we go. And as you can see, anytime you're firing artillery, unless we have really good visuals, we're really close and they're in an open area and not in a wooded area like they are now, we're just not going to kill many of them. We destroyed four of their trucks, but I don't think that's really going to count for much. I want to save the rest of our arty. Um, we do have one more Werfer over here with the SS Panzerkorps. Um, here's what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to take the Hetzer Brigade and try and get behind the enemy, cutting them off here. We'll try to get to Loschemergeben. And it looks like somebody was waiting for us, but we got away um, almost undamaged here. I want to make sure to deal with this unit as well. Let's push forward. We'll get a visual on it already. And let's see if we can attack from multiple angles here. Still not looking great. Still not looking great. Um... Maybe if we bring up this Volksgrenadier Division H. No, it's this a Division HQ. Not really. Don't really want to push them up over here. I'd like to get behind the enemy, but I think I'll just have them join the fight. And let's go ahead and bombard that area a bit. So we'll just give it some shots. No return fire is expected, and we can fire that Nebelwerfer that was just sitting there. All right. Not bad. So, whoa, that was pretty good. 40 enemy veterans, a number of their AT guns, and some trucks. It's a nice end to the uh, to that particular attack. And now, let's just see if that HQ added to anything here. Um, I think I'm going to just do a standard attack. Again, two to one is not aren't odds that I typically like. But we did an okay job here. Um, we lost some men ourselves, but I think that was certainly worth it the graphic view after all we do have supply directly behind us so the idea is to try and get behind them and cut their supply off entirely there we go we've got them falling back to Loshume Gaven keep pushing forward Ooh, gonna deal with tanks soon Is 
that a mortar? Did they actually... I don't know what just happened there. Must be some sort of uh, mortar strike there. Let's see. Um, I want to see if we have any additional units that can face that tank. We should have saved the Stug group. Now I'm kind of thinking maybe we should push through even more, but that could potentially get us trapped. Then again, it cuts off a lot of the enemy units in this area. Let's take a look at Group Piper. And this is one of the SS groups. They might have, yeah, some Pioneer Battalions. These guys know how to deal with tanks. Oh, ho, ho. intercepting fire. And that's not from the tank. That's just uh, intercepting fire from heavy artillery. Um, let's also push over here with the Tiger II. Oh, intercepting fire again. Damn it, they're getting lucky. We're going to take uh, Sandig and actually try to get him in the north here. We're still going to be able to come off on this attack, and I think it'll go pretty well. 29 to 1. 32 to 1, 33 to 1. We don't need to do the 33. All out attack. Oh, unbelievable, guys. They are retreating. Of course, the Americans are not expecting uh, this attack. So this is quite a shocker. And if we can hit them, you know, really, really quickly and uh, just, you know, pretty much disappear as quickly as we appear, then we should be just fine. Let's get a detailed list there. I want to see how many of my tigers we lost. I think I lost one tiger. But we destroyed 10 Greyhounds, 2 M3s, 3 M5s, and 3 M8s. I mean, that's pretty damn good. Uh, I'm going to continue the attack. So I've seen this in a lot of these strategy games, and I like this. And once you get a successful attack, um, that forces the enemy to retreat with a German tank division or an American tank division. You can attack again. So we will be attacking again, but I want to try to hit him with multiple units here. Really see if we can't wipe these uh, enemy positions out before our men even get here. I'd love to attack that AT position, but I might compensate and just keep hitting those tanks uh, because we can do a tremendous amount of damage uh, just early on here. Well, let me just take a look here. Yeah, the odds aren't great, so let's go for the tank. Six to one already, and that's just what with the Aflakung Abteilung. Uh, again, they've got mostly Pumas, stuff like that. Not necessarily something um, that's going to scare away a tank, but they're going to do damn well. So these SS troops are certainly elite. All-out attack, boys. Robert Roberts, thank you so much for, for coming in, man. Here we go. All right, so pretty good. Again, destroying a number of their vehicles here. I really prefer the graphic detail. Like, I like the graphical detail, and then I like to jump to the textual if it's like a major battle. But you guys, let me know what you think. In fact, when the video uploads, uh, comment down below which one you prefer. Uh, yeah, same game. This is the same one we were playing on Twitch as well. Although this is one of the games that really does not make it on Twitch. <laughs> uh, I think there was like three subscribed followers um, on the entire game. You know what? We could actually bring this Panzer Regiment behind the enemy here. But I want to go for the attack. I want to destroy those tank regiments now. So I'm going to bring them here for, for this particular move. And let's see. Might even bring in the AA Brigade just to assist... Uh, in attacking this tank position. Oh boy. Let's see if we actually do more with just the tank. No, the AA group does help. We are devastating their armored divisions. I love it. I love it. Now again, they've still got a lot here, and we can go for that second attack. Um... Not sure I'm necessarily going to follow up unless I can get some support. And we can with the Panzer Grenadier Regiment here. Look at this, guys. Here we go. 56 to 1. Yeah, definitely the SS Regiment assist. Look at that, though. 50 to 1. Just in terms of... That's weird. So that tells us that even in the way you set up forces... And I didn't know this, but uh, evidently, like, this one will be ahead of the tanks. That's really, really cool. Good shooting, and actually we wiped out just about every armored vehicle there. I think they're down to just infantry. Wow. Mechanized infantry in any case. All right, now these guys are usually used for um, um, for artillery, but we're actually going to bring him in for a potential attack because every now and again, you can use that Panzer Artillery, the Vespas and the Hummels, just drive over enemy infantry units. Gassessa. Wow, that's crazy, man. 
Michael Gassessa lost two of his childhood friends in this battle, 28th Infantry Division. And um, wow, a German or, a, or American side? Because I guess 28th Infantry Division, I think it must be German, right? Because I think it's 101st Airborne. Um, who else was part of this battle? That is insane, man. The Battle of Saint Sonvit. I think it's Sonvit, right? I, I want to say it the correct way, but then I feel like I'm being an uptight prick, and you guys don't like that. And so I just want to be like the Mary, like just Saint Vith. That's probably what the soldiers called it. Just old Saint Vith over there on the other side of the of the river there. Um, but it's probably Sonvit, I would guess. Right, let's see if we can go ahead open fire on that tank uh, unit, and I will also get some anti-tank to assist. I don't want him to assist because he can be used in attacks. And I wouldn't expect much damage here. We actually did hit two, three. Uh, not bad. Not bad, actually. Let's take a look at the textual detail there. Knocked out a few of these M5s, M8s. Even M8s were destroyed um, in that barrage. So again, the goal is to weaken those guys as much as possible. Let's take the 388. This thing is massive. We are going to want to move it forward, though, at some point. I'll get some uh, anti-tank support as well. Four M3s, a bunch of the trucks. Oh, not a bunch, but a couple. Yeah, nothing crazy, honestly. Nothing crazy, but you can't expect massive uh, results with artillery unless it's like Nebel workers right up close and personal. Was PA National Guard. Wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. And that just goes to show you, you know, even a service like the National Guard, a lot of people think, oh, yeah, yeah, they don't do anything. Nonsense. I mean, look at that. That's amazing, man. A National Guard unit. I guess because, once again, they didn't expect attacks on this front, right? So they must have they must have used the National Guard units to maybe um, uh, do, like, roadblocks, things like that. Amazing. Uh, let's bring in the Stugs. I thought we were going to be able to get behind them, but it looks like on this Vekarov front, we're going to call it, um, they have a pretty good position. With high ground there. So let's see. Yeah, I'll go for it. Got to look out for the AT guns there, but that was wonderful. Pretty devastating and only lost a few SDKFCs, although we did lose four Stugs. So, eh, you know, it is what it is, but every now and again, you got to gotta have some sacrifices. All right, let's keep on following him. And now that he's been really badly weakened, I think we can hit the 18th Cavalry Squadron with everything here, with everything the Stug uh, can throw at him. Let's take a look there. Not a single Stug lost, and look at that. Three M5s destroyed, an M8 destroyed. Love it. And we also took out a 60 millimeter mortar. Um, am I winning? Uh, yes and no. We just started the battle, but I think I'm going to do pretty well in this scenario. I kind of had a... I, I've already played it. <laughs> I'm not going to tell anybody if I've already beaten it, but um, I have a plan of how to approach it. Let's put it that way. Once we get to St. Viet, which is over here. Let me find it right there. That's the really the tough nut to crack. Um, I think we can pretty much push up there. I mean, it's going to take us time, but uh, we can push up there for sure. We're going, but if we're badly damaged by the time we get there, we will not win the scenario. Number one, um, and number two, they get reinforcements from the west of Visam. They bring uh, all these reinforcements to the east to hit our already really, you know, tired infantry units and tank units, uh, because of course they've been fighting all throughout this area. Um, to get up on the enemy. In fact, right now we're just taking these Fultra Mega squads and just putting them into position. We can actually surround this unit. Look at that. We can actually go for a full surrender. Let's do it. Boom. Boom. I think that's going to be an easy win right there. Hey, boys. And another Stug squad. Yeah, I don't want to use him for infantry operations. Um, three to one's not incredible odds. He might actually hold till next turn. Um, yeah, we definitely t took some nasty hits there. So we're going to just kind of let them run out of supply, and the goal is to kind of get behind these guys and completely cut them off, which I think we can do uh, fairly quickly here. We're going to temporarily turn this guy into an attacking unit just to maximize damage on this unknown right here. Nice. And he's going to retreat. Just a standard uh, infantry unit, it looks like. 4 2 2. Bloody Bucket, Hurtkin Forest. Man. Oh, by this period, they were they were seasoned infantry. So they must have seen a lot of combat even before this. Yeah, wow. 
So does anybody know, were National Guard units, um, like, uh, during the D-Day landings, did they land as well, you know, during, um, uh, on Sword, Juno, or any of those beaches, or whichever beaches the Americans landed on? Omaha Beach, I guess, right? So I'm really tempted to push west here, but I think actually what we need to do is push northwest, um, through Winter's Pelt, up to Steinus Rook. Why, these, these, it's like Game of Thrones names, come on, these can't, these can't be real. Here we go. Push forward to Eagle's Hold. Is it Eagle's Hold? If it is, I'm just I'm just quitting. Um, you can definitely capture more gas. I think I'm not sure if you can capture more gas. Let me re re let me rephrase that. This game, um, capturing is not as important as having good supply points. Now you can cut off enemy supply by cutting off their gas. Like if we cut these roads off and these uh, railroads off. They wouldn't be getting any supply, any fuel, any um, ammunition, any food. That's what you can do. But I think you use this, the card system, which I don't know if everybody's going to be a fan of this. Um, you use this card system to get um, things like additional fuel, for instance. You know, you can get like a minor depot, uh, start building that up. Um, but the idea is just make sure that those roads remain open so that we're continuously getting reinforcements from the glorious Reich. At this point of the war, the, the Reich just barely still has stuff to throw at the Allies. So, we get a real good um, view of that here. They are, like, we're right there, we should see somebody, but... Evidently, no. They let they completely left Blealf open, instituting Reich law in the city. Look for those traitors. How you doing, Alan? Good to see you, bud. They were considered U.S. Army National Guard, it was just their origin. Ah, okay, okay. Wow. That is epic. But these days, uh, is that still the case, where National Guard are posted to, like, forward combat zones? Or is it usually, like, um, supporting positions? Get to cross him. Uh, I wanted to cut through cross him Henberg to get to this area. But I think we're going to have to do this. Ooh. Actually, that was artillery fire that stopped us. I thought I thought for a second somebody was in that town, um, but now I'm not so sure. Yeah, let's just open fire here. I don't think they're going to be expecting that at all. Hit him with a massive AT. Oh, yeah, that worked out pretty nicely. 12 trucks, a bunch of their infantry as well. Oh, wow. That is really cool. So it looks like we do have a... Eh, no, we don't. I'm not going to attack yet. Make sure the HQ is remaining close to the men, so we're always getting um, those HQ, HQ bonuses and, of course, the supply. If they are not in that green zone, they are not getting supplied, which, of course, is not what we want. Um... I'm going to cut over here, actually. Intercepting fire killed one of our men. Always that one unlucky guy is in there. Push that up. Push that. I didn't want to push across the river, damn it. It's okay, though. As long as they don't counterattack yet, and I don't expect them to counterattack right now. Because they're pretty surprised, you know. This is kind of when they're shocked. 13-1, to immediately going to take that. Oh, beautiful. How you doing, Sebastian? What about, um, I'm trying to think. Not Coast Guard. Oh, no, 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 no. No, no, nods are definitely a huge no, no. Or I guess Coast Guard. Does Coast Guard ever get posted to, like, uh, combat theaters? Um, are they, do they ever help in battles? I, if I recall correctly, there were Coast Guard guys in Nam, in Vietnam, that managed to earn some uh, medals, but maybe that's something else, like the guys that were on the uh, the patrol boats. Was that Coast Guard? Now I wonder. Or maybe it was just Navy, or maybe even just Marine Corps with, uh, with patrol boats. Push up here. Once again, just keeping that HQ as close to the men as I can. And we definitely want to push up these units as well. I believe we actually get some pretty awesome units... Um, in this scenario, let me take a look here. Now, this is... Oh, I, I love this. I love this. Um, I don't know what you guys would call this. Well, I mean, obviously, it's a grief team. But um, 
so basically, if you guys have ever seen like a Battle of the Bulge movie or study the Battle of the Bulge, um, there was that time where Germans were dressing up as like, uh, you know, American checkpoint soldiers and setting up these fake checkpoints and uh, capturing and killing Americans. And here as the Germans, we can do that. We can actually set up one of these grief teams. And we're going to try to play it behind one of the enemy supply points. So I'm just looking at the map here. Putting it in Bullingen would probably be great, but I don't know if we can necessarily get away with it. Um, maybe if we just put it kind of over here, north of Huni. So we're going to play it right there. And I'll show you guys. Hold on. If we look at that area, look at that. So now we've got a unit. I'm just going to leave them. Uh, you're not supposed to move the unit. You're just supposed to kind of leave them here. Uh, but hopefully next turn, when the enemy does their move, we're going to ambush that unit and do some, some serious damage to it. They were at Guadalcanal. Wow. That is awesome. Oh, patrol boats were Navy. Okay, okay. So, like, for instance, um, what's the name of the damn film? Uh, is it... No, not Platoon. Um, uh, sorry, trying to play and think at the same time. Not exactly um, a winning combination. Apocalypse Now. So, the guys that were in that patrol boat... Who would they have been? That's Navy, right? That's Navy? That seems like such a freaking dangerous job. Just nowhere to, es to escape if you're, you know, on both sides, you've got jungle. You've got, like, a very, very narrow waterway ahead of you. I just, no, I would not do that. That or Tunnel Rat sounds horrifying. All right, let's move up to SS, boys. They've waited long enough. Push these guys forward. Again, make sure that that HQ is close. My only um, complaint with this game, besides the lack of the uh, the moral choices, which the other game had, is like not having a general, not knowing who the general is here. Or the commander. Wow, Anthony. My dad was Navy and spent some time in uh, patrol boats. PBR. Wow, oh, man. If anybody can recommend some, some books on those guys, the guys in patrol boats, particularly the ones that saw a lot of action, uh, please do. Especially in the uh, Discord channel, drop some books there, man. Trying to trying to get some reading, reading going on. Get my book learning up and such. There we go. We've got this supporting unit here, six Panzer. Uh, let's go to the area that's probably going to be the most troublesome, which is going to be actually the middle, uh, and we'll push six Panzer that way from Stadtkill. I'll fire some uh, Nebelwerfers. Oh, yeah. Devastating. Nine of those guns instantly destroyed. Book called Mekong about seals in the Delta. Ooh. Yeah, Navy seals always see some pretty nasty action, right? Like we should be doing something over here. Um, I think really the best thing to do is just try and get some of these units up here to support this army and cut that area off. PBR Street Gang. Oh, cool. Yeah, I don't recall the name, but that's pretty cool. It's been a while. It's been a while. All right, I think we've done all we can do. Um, potentially get a few more attacks off with the artillery if we want. Uh, maybe it's all spent. Oh, no, we've got some tanks to move. So let's push the 1st SS Panzer Regiment right there. Got some supporting artillery. I'm just going to push them into position so they get better shots. For the infantry, start getting over there in these gaps. Same with this Artie. We're just going to get them closer to the enemy with the 88. Um, once again, get it closer to the enemy. Right now, we can really position ourselves quite well. Okay. 
champion. I, I It might seem like I'm checking a lot, but I think in games like this, you have to make absolutely sure that you've used all of your uh, assets before you end that turn. Oh, completely vaporize them. You gotta love it when uh, when artillery actually strikes home. Naval air had mass for rolling bombing the north. What was it like? Um, those uh, that bombing campaign. It was like, oh god, what's the what's the statistic in relation to to World War Two? Like, how many more bombs were dropped on Vietnam? Or I think it's what uh, there were the same amount of bombs were dropped on Vietnam as the entirety of World War Two, or something like that. Let's end the turn here. Uh, first, first, first. Let me just quickly check. We do have an ability to call in a combat unit, um, and not yet, evidently. Okay, no problem. Could call in some replacements, but I think our men are fine right now. Then the turn. Ooh, enemies using some nice air attacks. You could do us a huge favor, guys. If you are watching, uh, please do hit that like button. YouTube really, really appreciates that. And when YouTube's happy, well, I, I don't know. I'm not going to say I'm happy, but <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All right. Game is in progress. Overcast just below zero. Again, it's quite cold. So at the moment, um, as you can see here, um, we have five victory points. Uh, they gave us... Now, this is the important part. Allied casualties gave the Axis three extra victory points. So again, just for lowering basically the morale of the nation, of, of the U.S., uh, killing a bunch of enemy units and destroying a bunch of vehicles, we are gaining points ourselves, and we could use that to win. Um, now, ostensibly, you could, you know, never take a city and just destroy a bunch of units and win, but that would be pretty tough to do, and besides, the enemy would just fall back, form a really strong defense line, and not, not move, basically. So we don't want it to come to that. By the way, um, that guy being there is just cutting off all of the supply coming in from this particular road. <laughs> so they're just probably wondering, like, where are all those supply truck drivers disappearing to? Say, ah, oh, dead now. Now for Sam is only silence. That was a little more of it. That, that was just... I went too far. I went too far. All right, let's see if we can go ahead and surround this unit completely. Uh, maybe go ahead and get an encirclement. I'm not sure I want to waste these action points. Yeah, they kind of made the decision for me. Boom. Damn, intercepting fire. Yeah, I'm not going to waste the action points anymore on just uh, encircling this unit. We'll just vaporize them here with one attack. Nope, we, no we won't. No we won't. You know what then? I take back what I said. Do that. Do that. He wants to be taken prisoner. It's not my it's not my fault. Vietnam was way more bomb tonnage. Damn. They actually got hit bad here. Um they did manage to hold and they also panicked our first uh, SS what looks like Yacht Panthers. So not good. Not good. They held pretty damn well there. Three to one right there with the SS units against this gun position. I want to take them out. Again, just want to remove any and all AT threats. We completely wiped that group out. Just look at that. I think only a couple got away. Twelve got away. Um, Ten rear area troops and two 76 millimeter AT guns. Again, this is something that I'm not a fan of that the game has done. And there was a German subscriber that commented on this in the, in the previous video. I believe it was uh, Maximilian Schoenhausen which was saying that the knock troop and thing doesn't even make sense. Uh, knock troop and I guess is like uh, rear guard units, uh, but they are not separate units. And I think the same is true here. Like, why would you have rear area? Like what, is this like cooks and chefs and stuff? I'm guessing it has to be, right? We can see right there, the representation is just rear area troops. Um, I'm get I think that could just be AT gun crew, but who am I to judge? Who am I to judge? Let's encircle these guys. We are encircling with an 88, yep. Gonna be shocked that we're gonna attack here, but actually I think we only need one unit to bust through this area. Yep, 
easily destroyed them. Capitulated. They really need to change that to surrendered. <laughs> I prefer surrendered. Support personnel. Okay, so in other words, that makes more sense than the Noctopen. The Noctopen is uh is odd for sure. Uh we could go just go ahead and do a ranged attack with the 88. I think we should keep trying to encircle the rest of these guys. Or at least attack them. 14 to 1. Yeah, let's do that with the uh, second SS. Completely destroy them. Hey, we're doing pretty good. We've actually got an enemy HQ. If we could capture that, well, that would absolutely give us a morale boost. Come on, boys. Not sure we can capture it. We can certainly do a lot of damage to it. Yeah, because we actually have to get across the river here. Um, that's a bridge. They might just destroy the bridge. Thankfully, we have some cards to repair the bridge. Yeah, look at that, guys. Interesting. So they are on the other side. Best of luck, boys. Sending our men to certain doom. Nope. And look at that. We actually forced the enemy HQ to retreat. If I'm not mistaken, we wiped out some HQ staff. So hopefully we got a general or something. Yeah, look at that. US staff 20 killed in action, missing, or a prisoner of war. Well, they are still holding on just barely. Bring in some additional attacks. In fact, we might need to soften the area up a bit. There you go. Open fire. That is a city tile, so I don't feel great about that. Does the game track fuel supply? Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it does, because if we click the unit... Let's have a look here. Um, must be somewhere down here. Supply consumption. Yeah. So it's going to let us know, essentially, um, supply consumption. If this goes to, like, 20%, 10%, etc., then we are out of range. Uh, but usually we get a warning far before that, because if you look at the lower left corner of these units... I was, I'm trying to zoom in more, but I can't. Um, you see that little, like, it's like a barrel, right? Like a green barrel. So that'll turn uh, red, essentially. It'll start, first, it'll turn yellow, and then it'll turn uh, red. Which is a reminder to go to the gas station as quickly as you can. Get their Invector off. So, sort of expanding the bulge a bit. The reason that this particular bulge failed for the Germans is they just didn't manage to push out enough. Um, so if we could go for a much more extreme push and take like Vereth right now, and of course we would easily be able to cut off all of these units and capture them. We are trying to encircle. Oh, that's right, we got this trapped unit. Let's see if we can't get them to uh, surrender. Oh boy. They're not going to make things easier. There we go. Nope. Got to play around here a bit with the units. Alright, so we're just sending in the 295th and the 1818 Pioneer Battalion. They're still holding. These guys are tough. Yeah, the logistics are very important in this game. But once again, you know, a lot of people ask me, like, is it about getting logistics or, or capturing them? You know, in Gary Grigsby's War in the East, um, you, you you have that where you can capture enemy uh, lodges and stuff. But here it's more about cutting the enemy off and having your own supply, um, you know, always running, essentially. Push forward with the already. We'll get better shots next turn. I'm going to send one of our guys up this way, up the road. Although I think the enemy will certainly be expecting us now. We still have that unit out there, by the way. We could get another one. Uh, cards. Leaf team. So we've got one there. We're going to put one of them in Anla, right there. We have traitors behind the lines. <laughs> the enemy's not going to know what hit them. Ooh, this one looks a bit different. Let's push up to Harris back. Actually, we could go ahead and try to take Schoenberg with this unit. I think it's pretty risky, um, but we could really mess up enemy supply if they don't have anybody waiting here. Yeah. Uh, maybe go attack here as well. Oh, 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 oh. oh all that supply is gone. They are going to miss all the supply from this area. Anything coming from this area over here. It's going to work well for us next turn. 
Um, but we've got to get in there. I mean, even if we got to get in on our hands and knees and, and attack this guy, force him to, to surrender. And he's holding on. I think he'll hold on till next turn, but we'll break him next turn for sure. We shall break him. That old gag. Okay, actually, I will use the Nebel Verifers um, in attacking the HQ here. Because we can actually deliver quite a lot of devastation, I believe. Look at that. Destroyed so many. Uh, and the U.S. staff, we took out 30. There are only 20 left. I think we're absolutely going to have going to be killing some uh, officers. I'd love to get an attack right now, and I think we're going to have to wait. 7 to 1. Never mind. And they're still holding. And across a bridge is tough. No, they, they retreated. Beautiful. Um, it is tough across a bridge just to, to deal with that sort of an attack. Um, do we have anybody that can get over there? It's not the end of the world, but I'd like to get over to the other side this turn. Already got some units here. Just expand that area. Yeah, they're going to have no AT whatsoever. I think the best the Germans could hope for, and I'm not even uh, I'm not even sure it's a realistic guess, Robert, is um, you know, that maybe the Allies would join them in a fight against the Soviets, and that's that wasn't going to happen. It's it just wasn't going to happen, you know. I think the best that could have happened is like, for instance, if the the Battle of Saint Vith was a success. You know, maybe the war would have gone on for somewhat a, a little bit longer. Um, the Germans would have been able to allocate more assets to the Eastern Front, etc. That's a possibility. Ooh, look at that 50 to 1. Not bad. 70 GI veterans destroyed in that Nebel Burfer attack. That just goes to show you how devastating these attacks can be. to get a unit in there in Loschebergeben. Yeah, nice. I expected that to go a lot better. Once again, pushing past them to cut off supply, deny them supply. Yeah, those odds are terrible for a tank attack. Let's just hold off. So I'm going to move over here across the river with the uh, Tiger II. Problem is, I think it'll be out of HQ range. We can we can uh, mess around with it, though. But this way, we can completely dominate this area and potentially even take that HQ out with the Tiger II. Wow. Unbelievable, man. They're all running away. <laughs> We've got them on the run. Let's see where Group Pipa is. Yeah, we're going to push him up right there. Nice. Actually, we're all in uh, in supply. Supply range. We're just going to let them suffer a little bit with uh, lack of supply for now. No, we know they're rear guard units. Um, what I was saying is that uh, Maximilian Schoenhausen commented on a video and mentioned that while there are rear guard units, it, they wouldn't be a specific division that are designated rear guard units. It would just be like, you know, units of a particular division would be rear guard units and maybe even change between rear guard units with, with other units. Um, it wasn't a specific, like you couldn't join as a rear guard unit. Uh, they could have put all their army on the Eastern Front, wouldn't have changed much. Yeah, maybe a month longer, exactly. That's a more realistic uh, view of the situation. We could just throw everything in the kitchen sink at these guys and probably get a pretty decent attack, but it's not worth all, all that. Just not. Also bring up the uh, extremely heavy artillery if we can. I think we've used it this turn, but next turn we can bring that forward. Six Panzer on the way to help. They don't have much. Um, I think they have a light armor group there. Um, and they've got an AA group. It's, it's not much, but it'll it'll help.
Uh, we'll try to find them, but they, they are uh, designated. So, like, when you click it, it says Nachtruppen. Uh, we don't have a... We need to find them, but we have seen them before. That's why... That's why the person left the comment. Or maybe he's schizophrenic. I don't know, but that's the comment he left. I I, tr I tend to trust um, his comments because he's, he's German. And I always trust Germans. <laughs> uh no but really um no i trust him i trust him it's just saying it's not like its own unit designation it's you know sometimes you pull night duty sometimes you pull rear guard duty etc we've done all the moves we can with these units um pretty much wait a minute What is that? Wait, why does it have... Why are we seeing that? That's strange. Okay, well. It is what it is. Uh, keep on moving. No, a few more attacks for sure. And actually, it looks like we can hit that um, artillery position. Yeah, blue is Falschermiga. That's right. I'm currently surrounding some enemy units. And guys, this is considered a medium-sized battle in this game. So it just goes to show you how large battles in this game can get, because we haven't even gotten through the entire front. You know, we've done the northern part, but there's still there's still work to do here. Uh, I'll take that. Three to one for sure. Not bad, but a bloody battle for both sides. Look at that. Certainly a, a bloody battle for us. 70 infantry taken down. Yeah, we can absolutely follow up on that. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to go any further because I don't want to get surrounded myself. Terrible. Even for a ranged attack, that's bad. All right, let's push north. Again, we're not going to push west. We're going to push north uh, with the southern army. Push, like, sort of northwest, I guess. It's gonna be hard to split the HQ between these two, but I think we can still make it work. Yeah, that's what we're that's exactly what we're saying, Mike. You're uh, you're agreeing, you're agreeing with us. <laughs> there are no designated rear guard units, you know. But in this game, there are. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, there there are designated Nachtruppen. Again, unless we're looking at it incorrectly, or maybe... Um, like, for instance, they're maybe just being represented here on the bottom. Uh, the bottom rocker of the screen doesn't mean that they're, they're saying they are designated, you know, single designated units. I'll have to ask him to clarify. Get the Panzer out of there. No. Definitely gonna wait. And actually, if I can get that already closer, with a group like that, I'll take a shot. Sixty green GIs, ten veterans. Pretty nice for an artillery attack. Once again, stack right there. I'm going to fire at those stacks when we get a chance to. But just to maximize casualties on the enemy side. Again, just making absolutely sure I've moved all of these units. 
We've got to move up the Falschmega division for sure. We'll put them like right. Eh. Uh, maybe we put him right there. Not not really gonna move him too much. You won't guess which book uh, will be released next year that I found out yesterday. Which one? Yeah, not an attack. Uh, open the order of battle. Uh, it's right here. We'll show you what we're talking about when we get there, Mike. Right there. So you see Nachtulpen? Right there. So essentially what um, I believe Maximilian Schoenberg was saying is this would not exist. He would just be part of the infantry. Whether that's true or not, uh, I leave it up to you guys to decide. And this should be a fairly simple attack, especially since we have SS on the other side there. One, two... I just don't want to dedicate um, tanks to this attack. Let's switch to range and just try and do... Nope, not going to do that. All right, I think we'll end the turn there. Just let them suffer with lack of supply, and hopefully that'll be sufficient to shut them down. Um, could this be like Wars of Succession, wherein map units contain combined elements on one counter? That's what I'm thinking. Like, in other words, how can I explain it? Maybe they're not saying that, like, this is its own unit. They're just saying that, like, tonight, these infantry units are going to be designated Nachtruppen units. You see what I'm saying? Like, that kind of makes sense. But I can understand somebody that's, like, really invested in in this sort of history getting, like, kind of frustrated. Like, wait a minute. There were, there were no units called the the reserve units, right? I guess that's that's what they were saying. Overcast just below zero. Got another grief team we could lay down. Let's just take a look at the other two. So I feel like if I move here, he's just going to immediately aggro. If you don't move, the enemy doesn't know you're a grief team. So I guess you can use it to just sort of spy on the enemy. Um, but we can also use it to cause confusion with the supply. So I'm going to move into Anler. Like this. Maybe even Schoenberg. That's the problem. So if we come across anybody, we get just murked instantly. We do have one unit. Um, okay, let's keep on going. We're doing the German version of Hearts War, guys. That initial scene when they escape from the front line, trying to get behind the enemy. I think we still will cause confusion. And of course, these units will be focused on getting that area back. Let's push down, or actually no. Gonna go north. No, we'll let somebody else take Mondefeld. Oh, Congo 64. So that's, um, that's not an, well, I mean, it is made by the same guy that uh, made the Age Odd games, uh, but that's a Wars Across the World game. That's a pretty good one, too. Now we should be able to root these guys out. I think they will surrender. Yep, they surrendered. For sure. Destroyed. Oh, that, okay, that, that's understandable. So on a smaller scale map, Interesting, interesting. Security shown as a separate entity. Okay. Let's keep the Vokes Grenadier HQ right there. I'll try to bring this guy in. Maybe just some good old-fashioned artillery fire on the position. Und das Position.
If we fall back here, um, we certainly could encircle him. That's going to help in this battle because, again, destroying the enemy, capturing the enemy in this fight uh, is helpful. Body count does matter here, not just uh, victory locations. But then again, taking out some bazookas is always sounds fun. Yeah, let's cut them off. Let's cut them off completely here. And look at that. That's a number of enemy units. Question is, can we get another one of our guys over here to completely encircle? Yeah, let's just go for attacks here and see what they do. Not the best attack, um, but we'll take it. We won't go for an all-out attack. Not bad. Yeah, they're pretty tough right now, but they are cut off. You know, we don't have to encircle them completely to cut off their supply, but to capture them and force them to surrender, we do. Uh, if there's any sort of opening here, they're they're going to fall back out. out. Out over here, for instance. Is it true that the British killed the UN Secretary General in Congo uh, 64 conflict? Ooh, I'm not sure. I know little, next to nothing about the conflict. Um, but I did enjoy playing the scenario. Pushing to Holzheim. I'm just gonna wait across the bridge here. Could be, you know, kind of tough and try to push through completely, but I think this guy will be cut off. Uh, then again, got some units that can make it across the bridge. The faster, the better, right? So I think they're expecting the Tiger to attack here at Harrisbach to go towards Schoenberg. But what if we just keep going over here towards Wereth? I'm going to try it cause mass confusion and try to head north here to uh, Mordorskide and Bullingen cut these guys off completely. Just have to see if it ends up working or not. Take a single attack there with that unit should. Yep. All it took was that unit attacking and they surrendered immediately. I'm going to send a tank in to assist here. Uh, let's pull him out. Yeah, that's going to be a tough attack. Damn. Uh, we'll just surround them for now. No biggie. Bullying is where you get bullied a lot. Ah. Uh. We did a pretty good job right there in the initial hit. Look at the actual defenders there. Yeah, I'm going to follow up with that. I typically would not do an all-out attack with 2 to 1 odds, but I'm going to do it here. Oh yeah, panicked. They are going to run back. Uh, let's keep hitting them. No return fire? Take advantage here. Oh, nice. Once again, killed a number of them. Looks like eight veterans, three GIs, a mortar, three bazookas, six trucks. Pretty good. Really trying to make the units around 20 just totally combat ineffective. Lower those numbers as much as possible. And finish him off. I will try and go for an attack there. I just want to have sufficient units to do it. So let's bring in the Tiger. Yeah, that's going to make things a lot easier. Damn. Okay, that was not fun. Lost two Tigers against... What is this thing? A combat engineer squad. Well, my dad would be proud. My dad would be proud, that's for sure. Uh, but I'm not happy about that. Kind of forced us to stop before we wanted to there. Yeah, 
Yeah, again, I think we'll probably just have to wait to next turn to attack this guy. That seems like such a waste. It's a waste of time. Yes. Yeah, there's no way we're going to make it. Uh, we're just going to have to bombard him. Pretty much. Boom, boom, boom. Throw everything we've got at him in terms of artillery. Nice. Pretty nice. Starting to loosen the guy up a bit. But it's still going to take quite a lot to get through here. So I'll just try to keep single units on those tiles as I move tor uh, towards locations like Pony right here. Eight to one. We've got to go for the all-out attack. And sure enough, the enemy retreated. It's a shame we can't cross right there this turn, but that is not bad so far. And there's no point in hiding our wonderful uh, roadblock units anymore. Look at that. Bullying in his horse. That's insanity. That is insanity. So, um, yeah, it looks like... Um, our second grief team actually managed to take the city of Bullingen, put it under German control without us having even really crossed the lines uh, with any of our actual armies. So that's that's pretty hilarious. I'm gonna make like a good a foreign film right there, a good German student film about the town of Bullingen that uh, went pro-German before before the uh, or behind Allied lines, I guess. I don't know, but that's pretty crazy, and that's gonna mess with their supply tremendously. Keep moving over here. We'll try to mop things up with Bulk's Grenadier and remain in that area. But it's not looking great for the Allies. We're doing okay. We're doing okay in this initial push. Not saying we're going to win, but... So far, so good, basically. Just going right past the enemy, trapped enemy. We can't stop and, you know, focus on just capturing him. We've got to continue the attack. Easy win. Kids used to call anything that was a tube and shot a projectile at a bazooka. Well, you never heard of a, a potato cannon? That's something that, uh, at least when I was a kid, people would have. Pretty dangerous, too. Parents used to say, you know, it, it can put an eye out. Ooh, nice intercepting fire there. Didn't actually hurt us, but it scared the hell out of me. And I don't like those 2 to 1 odds at all, but I'll take them. They did retreat. In general, though, we're not that desperate this early on in the battle. We didn't need to fire that. We didn't really need to shoot there. Yeah, I'm not happy about that either. The uh, the flags. There we go. Cut off an additional group of units right there, guys. Just beautiful so far. Yeah, the Americans would not be happy here. I think in the actual battle, they were only in, in danger of use of losing one unit. Or not one unit, but uh, what are these? Uh, one uh, regiment. Um, but they managed to pull them out. So we're doing somewhat better than the original battle so far. But that could change. I mean, anything could change. Get some AT support there, just a little bit. To lob a metal slug, my goodness, Soviet toys. Yeah, I'll say. Hey, if Bullingen is where you get bullied a lot, then what is born? <laughs> uh, this is why, this is why I'm, I'm not a comedian. Here we go, guys. Let's keep on pushing. Let's get out of here. 
Uh, that's right. I think it's at this point we can probably call in that infantry unit. New unit. Fortram Jaeger Division. Or maybe even more. I think it's more than that. Um, so I was hoping we could drop him here in the south. It looks like we've got to put him to the north. We're going to send him to a city of bullies, as Mike likes to call it here. Bulling in. And uh, there we go. So four. Nice. Not bad. Again, you can't, you, you, we can't move that this turn, but next turn, uh, we can start moving those guys. Lawn darts. I remember those. I remember those. But, you know, even when I was younger, and of course, I, geez, I was born in uh, 1989, but the long darts thing was was not something even known to us kids. Like, we knew what they were, but I, I never knew anybody who actually used them. I was aware of the product. Make sure all those HQs are where they should be. Pretty much. closing the gap again to capture these guys next turn. And I think that's about it. Let's end that turn. See what the Americana do. Trying to break out, but we actually stirred, stirred, stirred really, Agrippa? Stood firm. Wonderful. Did not expect that breakout. Okay, guys, it is nighttime. As you guys know, this is where things get even more dangerous, but we are gaining additional VP just from the casualties caused there. We went from, what was it, 7 last turn to 22? Uh, that's insane. 29 now. I mean, we're doing quite good, but we need to get to 80, I believe, to get a major victory. Um, and maybe like 70 or for a minor? Maybe 80 for a minor victory. You got to win big if you're going to win in this situation. And since it's nighttime... Maybe it'll be a little bit easier for our um, black uniform clad SS men to crawl in here and get the enemy. I think they'll be able to. Root some out of the trenches. Maybe you can send some AA guns with them. Yeah. You try to help. Here we go. Uh, yeah, we definitely got one of them to panic, one of them held. But since he's on that tile and the other unit didn't fall back, he basically remains on that tile. He doesn't surrender. Mom told me she could have brought me a nail shooting AK. <laughs> my gosh. And my my parents used to think that like paintball was controversial. You know, I had to like when I was a young kid, I had to like just beg my dad, like, please let me let me play paintball. And fine, it's like, okay, okay, but I brought home a, a nail gun. My goodness, man. Would have lost his mind. I don't know if we should send in the tanks on this. I really don't. I mean, we will, of course, destroy them, but I think these tanks are going to be better used um, advancing on the front. So that's what we do. We'll advance to bully, bully town here and try to take it back. And unbelievably, our, um, our actual grief team is still operating. <laughs> they are still operating. Now, they have taken back Bullingen, so they knew something was up, but I think that's pretty funny. Yeah, the attacks at night are not the best. As you can see, we would in daytime, I think we would devastate this unit. Uh, we will send in first SS Panzer here. Run away! And just hold Hunsfeld there with those Tigers. 
could advan advance along because once again, that is a friendly patrol unit. Uh, I'm going to try to crawl over here, but I don't want to go across the road because the enemy will catch me. So I'm going to crawl through. There we go. So now we're on this road, cutting that off. Just try to make a little bit of a change every day. The rusty nails would make it more fun. <laughs> anyway, guys, it is quite late here in Portugal, and I suspect in most places at this point. Um, or early, depending on how you look at it. But thank you guys so much for stopping by. And again, just like all of my other um, videos, particularly these decisive campaign ones, if you want part two to come up, we're going to make these like live stream and upload exclusive. In any case, they will all be on YouTube. Um, so just make sure to, after the video uploads, to comment and like the video. That's all I ask. I'm not asking for any cash donations or anything like that. Just make sure that everybody comments on the video not here in chat i do appreciate you guys chatting but it, that does nothing for the video make sure to um drop like after the video uploads basically uh but yeah part one of the battle of saint Vite, and again this is a medium battle i am guessing that for us to get through this it's 15 turns i think we've only done two full turns which means that to get through this battle maybe three we may yeah we might have done three full turns to get through this battle it's going to take us another two three hours i would say minimum um it is what it is all right, guys, thank you again for stopping by. I really do appreciate it, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.